lot of times when you meet people in a certain field who are perceived as leaders or even mythical figures, it becomes a total disappointment when you actually see this person's actions or meet them in person. Harry Walker is the exact opposite. I've worked with Harry since 2012, and, he, and he's, he's made amazing progress. He's, you know, back then, he wasn't super strong. He didn't have great endurance. He wasn't super explosive. Since then, you know, he's on his way to a 600-pound deadlift. He's in a powerlifting meet and a marathon in the same week, he's a, he's someone that when you find out that he's a leader in the Marine Corps, you feel like, man, I am proud to be American and I feel very safe. This is exactly who I would want leading our troops. He's an amazing guy. And here he is training in South Korea. It's a little island called, um, I don't know how to sp- pronounce it. It's Bay, B-A-E-N-G-Y-E-O-N-G-D-O. It's a little less than 10 miles off of North Korea. They didn't have traditional weights, but that's okay. So Harry gave me some stuff they're gonna have. So I did my best to um, program it to the specifications he needed. And obviously there was some adjustment on the fly, but you know, where there's a will, there's a way. You know, limited space, limited equipment, any of this stuff, Harry's always found a way. He's never, you know, not been able to train. So. You know, what Adam Benchia talks about a lot of times is comparing down. And what that means is you don't look at what you, you don't look at what you don't have, you look at what you do have, you know. So that's exactly what Harry does every time. You know, he doesn't have, you know, a squat rack here or a leg press, but he has a tire here and he's a belt, he can drag a tire. So what, that's the thing I like, really like about, one of the things I really like about Harry, there's so much I like about him, is he always compares down, he always finds a way no matter what and um, if you watch him so he you know he he's an officer and he leads his guys totally totally by example he all over the world no matter where he's at and uh, watch here he's doing body weight training so you know a lot of times we get asked about body weight training and, and some people say you know we get a little off course here but how can you how can you uh, make body weight training harder you know I can do you can do 20 push-ups is useful to do 30, 40, 50, 100, so on and so forth, keep going. So some of the ways to increase your prowess and body weight training is uh, drop body fat. Okay, obviously excessive body fat is gonna hold back um, your, your body weight prowess because you have so much extra weight that's not helping, you can't flex fat. And uh, over the course of time, Harry's gone from sort of a skinny fat kind of guy in 2012 to, I mean, he's yoked up now and in all the PT exams, he always exceeds the standards. He's always in the top, you know, 1% and always, you know, gets awards and stuff like that for it. Okay, next, concentrate on the negative. So if something's, you know, if you're doing, you know, f- say 50 push-ups, you're not gonna be able to do 50 push-ups anymore if you um, concentrate on the negative. Let's say you do a five count negative on the way down. So what you can do there on that type of training like we've talked about before, is actually feel out the negative, try to actually feel the muscles doing the work and then explode up. So that's what in Jailhouse Strong, when Fed James Carroll talks about red, he said he would try to literally feel every muscle fiber in his chest contract. Okay, so keep leverage in mind because the, it's, uh, the difficulty of body weight training, you consider the proximity of your extremities to your core. The greater the distance between the muscles you are targeting and what you're trying to lift, in this case your body, the less the mechanical exam- advantages. For example, in lifting, if you're completing a deadlift and the barbell drifts away from the midline of your body, the weight becomes much heavier and more difficult to lift. In body weight training, lunges with your hands above your head is more difficult than holding them by your, si- your sides. To increase the difficulty of push-ups, place your hands on the floor in front of your head. This simple change in limb position increases difficulty. So you can keep this concept in mind as you progress through your routine. Use pause reps. So at the bottom of a squat, you can pause it for a second. The bottom of push-up, you can pause it and explode up. So this is going to build starting strength too. Um, so then you can also reassess your connection to the floor. Elevating your front or your back will... Um, even make the most mundane workouts more intense. So think about it. If you're doing push-ups and you elevate your feet in a bench, they become harder. Okay. 
then of course with body weight uh, training uh, one is living clean <laughs> you know ernie franz talks about the ten commandments of powerlifting you can you can chase women but you can't you know stay out all night doing it so you have to eat your rest and um so here this is a great triceps exercise here so actually harry's doing this obviously another way you can make body weight training harder is with an additional load he has his weighted pack on there so obviously this is much harder than just doing straight up body weight so okay so he's going pull-ups here with a weighted pack boom anything outside of your body weight is a luxury said dr rusty smith and i think uh you know harry loves lives by this philosophy and he's grateful for that luxury of a pack this goes just pumping out push-ups here so you know even the most dire conditions you can always find a way to train where there's a will there's a way i mean if you're you know stuck in motel six for a month there's something you can do inside that hotel room here so they did have sandbags there again comparing down harry was really when he sent me the email saying that they had sandbags here it wasn't like oh man we just have a barbell you know there's no barbells here or dumbbells it's like hell yeah we have sandbags. I'm pumped. You know, what can I do with the sandbags? We can do lunges and squats, all sorts of things that you're going to see. And, um, you know, if, I mean, you can get, you could, if, if you don't have the money to buy barbells, dumbbells, gym membership, you could always just go to a local store, get some old, those burlap type of sacks, fill them with sand and train that way. It's going to be, you know, so then you have something beyond your body weight. You have a luxury when you can pare down. Boom. Harry's uh, also with all his training too. Um, Harry's, um, you know, one thing we've been proud of is with Harry. Not only has his, you know, his, his strength come way up as num the numbers don't lie. His endurance, all those times have come up, but he's gotten really explosive. When we've done different type of jumping activities. Um, he's actually gotten really explosive. So that's that's been a huge. His progress everywhere else. Let's watch him here. So bent over a row with a sandbag. There's so many functions. You can do with a sandbag and, and sandbag training is, is sort of in a lot of ways the ultimate form of functional training a lot of people think of functional training as some sort of goofy you know rendition doing you know one-legged curls in the air and a bozu ball but i mean with your your opponent is going to shift the sandbag is going to shift so here they got you know a dip station here so add some suitcase on there and harry's hitting some weighted dips where there's a will there's a way. There's never been anything short of a will on Harry's part, and there's always a way. Okay? So there's another way you can make body weight training more difficult. Instead of squatting on two legs, squat on one leg. Instead of uh, doing a push-up on one arm, I mean on two arms, do it on one arm. So, you know, you kind of look at the, 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 what, you know, the five decrees of jailhouse strong. The first one is, is, you know, obviously they're going to, it's going to be, I had a coach in high school, his name was coach worker, best coaches I've ever had. And he always talked about his philosophy was the next best thing. You always do what's next best because a lot of people operate in fantasy land because perfect is the enemy of great. A lot of time, not the enemy of good, you know, said perfect's the enemy of great because we're striving. I mean, you know, as a, as a mere mortal, we're striving for excellence, perfection, you know, that's deity status. So you got to think about it. So you've always got to do what's next best. Okay. So if I, if I don't have access to this, but I have access to this, that's the next best thing. So your, your move is always the next best move in the situation. Okay. So like, so get excited about training. So in jail, time can go, this is a five degrees of jail, how strong in jail, time can go really slow. There's no women, no nightclubs, no beach. You get the idea. So you need something to excite you. So for many hardcore trainees, this, their training is a way to is a way to, to for them to get that excitement. They plan workouts that are consistent, consistently creative and constructing these workouts and find new ways to strengthen their body. In addition, they let nothing stand in the way of their training. It becomes a primary focus of their life. As a consequence, it offers a source of therapy and a means to develop a hardened body and a tool for bettering themselves. That's 
So look, Harry's extremely excited about conditioning. It's like it's not like, oh no, I don't have barbells here. It's oh cool, I get to try some new stuff with sandbags. I get to do this. I get to do that. So he was extremely excited about training. So get plenty of rest. Is number two, inmates get a lot of sleep on a regular basis. Their bodies become accustomed to the routine of sleeping at a specific time. This allows for recovery from training and blah, blah, blah. Well, here's the thing. Obviously, you know, Harry's going to do his best to get plenty of rest. They, these guys are, are doing all sorts of things where they can't, you know, we're going to go to bed at 8 o'clock, you know, get up at 5 the next morning because, you know, every hour of sleep before midnight is worth two after and we'll make sure we get at least nine to recover. It's not like that for these guys. But they are doing their best. It's not at the same time, you know. It's not like okay, we we can get to sleep a little bit tonight. We're just stay up all night and drink beer and tell stories and, and not sleep. No, they're, they're making their rest a priority and doing the best they can. Eat meals at regular mess intervals. Again, next best thing. They're not going to be able to always eat a meal at the at the exact same time. But when they can, they do. And meals is a, food is a metaphor for physical conditioning and all the stuff they're doing because the body thrives on a routine. And what, so what these guys do when they're on their missions, they, when, they, when they're able to be on a routine, they are, they are not. So it's sort of like they're, they're always ready because obviously when you're training combat, um, excuse, not combat athletes, um, when you're training true warriors like this and tactical you know, guys like SWAT team and stuff, they're not always going to be able to warm up perfectly and things like that. So you train them so they're strong enough, explosive, mobile enough. If they get in a situation where they can't warm up, they are ready. You know, stay ready, so you have to get ready, gas station ready. This epitomize, uh, epitomizes that. So stick to the training basics. Okay, so, you know, Harry's proficient in Olympic lifting. So here we got a, a clean and jerk here with a sandbag. I mean, for an Olympic lift, it doesn't get more basic than that. Bent over rows, pull-ups the weighted pack, dips the weighted pack, lunges, things like that. All that stuff's pretty basic for, you know, but it, it's just not with a barbell there. So stick, um, remember, basics means fundamental not elementary so none of this stuff is is ele none of these movements are ever elementary they're fundamental to success okay so when conflict isn't that's decree number four so number five is when conflict is inevitable strike first in most circumstances you know respect is received when respect is given if you carry yourself well you can usually avoid trouble sometimes trouble will be Trouble comes looking for a victim. In those instances, you must not act like one. Strike first, move forward, be aggressive, and do not stop until your statement is clearly made. After that, after that, get out of there. Let someone else handle the cleanup. You know, you so. I mean, think about it. This isn't just self-defense or anything else. When um, you know, when conflict is inevitable, strike first. A conflict for Harry might have been there's not access to regular gym equipment. So what did he do? He struck first by, you know, finding out what they're going to have at the camp. Oh, we got sandbags. We got this. We got that. Immediately let me know. And so that's, it's not just saying like, oh, yeah, well, you know, you know, if you're in the, you know, the kick and stab bar and somebody approaches you the wrong way, just punch them. No, it's saying when there is any, any sort of potential conflict, you need to strike first. So in, in that case, it was, it, this was for training. So, yeah, I wanted to show a video of Harry because we're always showing videos of, of, you know, power lifters, you know, all these people that are doing amazing things, setting world records and stuff. But the reason we can make this, these videos and show you guys is because we are free because of warriors like this. And I'm honored to call this guy my friend and I thank him for his service. He's an amazing guy.